Hey guys, it's Dad. Um, I thought I'd slap together um, what I like to call the Scrubs Guide to playing Symmetra on defense. Uh, as you know, I love to play on pubs, uh, solo queue, um, do all kinds of raggedy weird team compositions, and lately all I've been playing is Symmetra to see if I can get a handle on her. So we're going to be going over um, a few things. Uh, basics that um, if you played the game at all you at least know some of this. Um, starting from assessing your own team composition, uh, knowing when and when not to play Symmetra, uh, sizing up the enemy early on um, to adjust your approach, uh, knowing your limits, know the limits of your tech, uh, your abilities, and um, practice the fine art of retreating. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some more like psychological tactics um, and ideal order of operations when you're rolling out pre-round. So uh, let's get started. We're on Hanamura right now. Uh, I actually couldn't get any footage this week. Um, all these clips are from the last two or three days. Uh, the only clip I could get was from when I ended up in um, re-instancing Limbo, um, and the game eventually quit. But uh, I figured you guys can see um, how the mini sentries deploy. Uh, the first three are free, meaning that um, there is no cooldown. You can put them down as soon as the game begins. Uh, the next three have a uh, somewhat painstaking cooldown period. It's not that long. It's a few seconds. But uh, what that means is that even if you hustle your ass um, out of spawn at the beginning of the round, uh, you're probably not going to have enough time to satisfactor satisfactorily put down... Uh, I don't know, uh, more than four exactly where you want them to be. The other two are, you know, gonna have to kind of be on the fly. Um, so we're gonna start on Volskaya. Uh, this is one of the messiest and probably least impressive clips. Uh, but there are a lot of elements going on here, uh, which is natural because it's such a large and varied map. Um, it's interesting and unique in that it has a lot of very wide open spaces, really tall architecture. Um, but that's coupled with uh, a lot of uh, very tight spaces. Um, so it's really dynamic in terms of uh, what you can set up where, what kind of traps. Um, and it's especially great for baiting and luring people in. Uh, and I was actually surprised that we made it through this one alive um, and did so well because uh, the Torbjorn had like um, the sentry up on a moving platform gimmick and all of that. But uh, I think we worked together really well. Uh, so let's just take a look at some of it. So on maps like this you can see why it's important um, to get a teleporter up and running as soon as possible. Um, it's just a lot of ground to cover. Um, and it's ground where you're vulnerable. Uh, because of the aforementioned wide open spaces. I mean, which benefits um, the targeted player as well, because a uh, line of sight goes both ways. But um, yeah, all in all, this, this one's a really good one um, to try and get that tally up as soon as possible. And in some of these clips, you'll see me neglecting to do that. Uh, it's probably one of the earlier clips. Um, I've really been making an effort to, uh, as soon as that alt, um, maxes out, the first thing on my mind is to back up a little bit and find a safe spot to get that up, because um, the sooner we use it and exhaust it, um, the sooner we can get up another one. And uh, one of the most common things people will tell you to do, um, because of the limitations and strengths of uh, your handheld weapon, your primary and secondary. I'm about to die in three, two, there we go. Um, they say spam choke points, good idea. It's not costing you anything. Um, but play around with it a little. Uh, holding down your right click will um, amp up the charge of your orbs. And you can see that um, in your reticle. Uh, you can see the inside circle expanding until it hits the edges. And when it hits that edge, you have no control. You can't hold on to it. Um, you're gonna have to let it go. So, uh, especially for um, at the beginning of rounds, when uh, you're waiting outside of the enemy spawn who's attacking, uh, you're gonna want to get like just a basic grasp, um, 
so your body kind of knows where things is, uh, of where the doors are, all the different exits, and you're going to stand behind cover, because um, you are very vulnerable and you're soft, you're squishy, uh, as they like to say. Um, but your weapon is really great because you don't need to maintain um, line of sight, you don't need to really aim past the first um, release of the orb. Uh, it's not like a traditional projectile such as a grenade or um, a rocket because it continues in this um, very space age uh, same speed same trajectory just slow speed um, never decelerates uh, and just goes and goes um, towards its final destination so what that means is that um, if you want to like get a little daring and uh, try and get a more static um, target uh, such as you know like a widow who's found her little perch um, just feeling invincible uh, what you can do is just know where she is charge up undercover like behind a box or something peek out for a split second uh, and release your energy orb directly onto your crosshair and their crosshair should be over your target and after that it's just you can walk away um, it'll do its own thing slowly in due time um, which is why I, I mentioned rhythm and movement uh, at some point um, you're gonna have to get used to sort of this like bobbing and weaving kind of rhythm uh, with a lot of other weapons like rapid fire hit scan uh, like automatic uh, guns and stuff like that, um, you obviously need to maintain direct, uh, uh, what is it, line of sight, vision, um, to your target. Uh, this is more of like a spam it and forget it kind of thing. Um, but there's an art to it, it's not as, <laughs> it's not as blunt as it sounds. Uh, yeah, just give it a practice on the target range or something like that. Um, it can do a surprising amount of damage, if especially with things that aren't moving or are fairly firmly planted. Um, it's unlikely that you're going to hit anyone who's a, an attentive and mobile player. Um, but at the same time, if the choke is narrow enough, uh, <coughs> your orbs are bound to take someone down. Um, but what I found was really effective is um, when you've got like a bastion cornered, but he's still got the upper hand in terms of firepower, like you're one on one right? 1v1. Um, you've got the cover, uh, but he's got nowhere to go. Um, in this case, all you have to do is bob and weave between, um, and I have a clip for this somewhere, not in here, just bob and weave between um, either side of whatever boulder or cliff he's hiding on, and uh, just peek. You know, he doesn't, he's not able to react that quickly. Uh, I've taken down a bunch of um, not so many turrets, although a few, but um, bastions are fairly easy to take down. And then if you find their like uh, delicate spot sort of uh, closer to the back of their neck, I think they have like a blue energy, something like that. You know, find their soft spots and once you latch onto it, uh, this is how the primary works, is that um, it releases a sort of an auto aim lock uh, beam of energy and um, it ramps up in damage. So it'll start off with a piddly 30 uh, HP damage um, per second, but if you manage to hold on and maintain that stream for uh, three seconds, you will be maxed out at 120 DPS, which is um, honestly that, plus if you manage to pull someone closer to you in your nest, like maybe a network of two or three uh, sentries, um, anybody will melt like pretty much any class will melt but it's a matter of baiting and luring people in as opposed to running away from the tech that you've put up uh in order to chase down kills so um yeah we made it through that one we're gonna move on to anubis which is uh fun and frustrating depending the first point is so much fun to hold down um and that has to do with the architecture uh there are a lot of um, nooks and crannies on this map that are really pleasant to uh, play with and incorporate um, into uh, your Symmetra style, um, especially if you're cognizant of where uh, health packs are going to be and what the most common um, flanking routes are. And uh, if you didn't know this, um, your HUD, when you're playing Symmetra, will 
show you the location of um, all of your currently deployed mini turrets, uh, which is hugely useful, um, almost rivaling kind of a having like a radar showing all your enemies. Um, you need a little bit more kind of spatial fluency to understand because obviously like uh, sentries that are located you know all across the map if you turn the map in a certain direction or if you're uh, facing in a certain direction they'll just all line up and turn into a blob so um but yeah so remember where you put the things and uh, they'll turn red to alert you if um, an intruder has walked by uh, so it's a really great way of um, helping out your team with recon without using like widow's wall hacks um, and uh, People say, you know, try and finish off your enemy, but for Symmetra, I would honestly suggest that she stay medium far back. She can engage sometimes, um, especially in rounds like this where just they're doing a very bad job pushing. Um, and I say that she's a little more expendable simply because once she distributes her shields, which she, she should be doing as soon as possible, especially if she's near her telly, just all she has to do is... Um, hit E for uh, anyone coming out of her telly since they've just respawned. Um, she's not as vital because she can still put out a massive amount of damage even in death. Obviously you want to avoid that, um, but uh, if you're countering Symmetra as well, a lot of people will have that dilemma of do I take out these sentries, which are low HP but deal a fair amount of damage. Um, or do I take out the person who's been putting them up? Uh, for someone like Torbjorn, I'd honestly say take him out first if you can. Um, although none of his turrets outside of Molten Core are really that difficult to take down, even when he's actively repairing it. Um, and I have some um, clips somewhere of uh, playing Mercy and uh, I think taking down maybe like six or seven different turrets throughout the game, throughout the day. Um, it's kind of a, a cheap thrill, but uh, I enjoy it. <laughs> um, so here I think due to a few like oversights, because um, we have a pretty solid team, we, we're not talking, but we're working pretty well together, just a random pub solo queue. Um, I think something happened earlier, I might have missed it, that wiped out kind of a good chunk of my sentries, and I also probably set up a little further back than I should have. Um, some people who play this game, I've noticed, exclusively set up on the first point, which I think is a little bit too scaredy cat. Like, you should be a little bit more aggressive, um, especially if you have a quick recharge uh, item as one of your skills. Um, like, for instance, my sentries deploy insanely quickly, um, meaning that they're expendable. Uh, I would have maybe pushed up a little more, um, and I normally do. But for this one, I think I either lumped a whole bunch together and they got wiped out. Um, so it kind of slowed uh, down our ability to push back. But um, as you can see, it ended up in a victory, but it was a pretty close one. Uh, and I'm showing you guys both because, uh, I don't know, it's good to see all the different scenarios. Um, a shutout before first point is great, um, of course, but uh, learning how to rally back and uh, you know, be flexible and adjust somewhat, um, and uh, knowing when to retreat or not retreat. And uh, that's one thing I wanted to talk about with Symmetra that's really important is that uh, everyone's got a different play style, everyone's got different tactics for, um, you know, war plans. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, I believe that. I forgot what I was talking about. Everyone's got different war plans. Oh, yeah, in terms of setting up um, like these imaginary lines, right? Um, the front line, we like to call it. Um, kind of like words borrowed from you know, wartime, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people have a tendency to uh, concede a point completely and not really consider um, the transitional spaces in between spawn to first point to last. Um, it's like if, if we feel we've lost A, uh, we must immediately rush, all rush back, all the way back to the final point and not put up a fight anywhere 
in between. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that there is a lot of space and honestly compared to the actual point itself, there um, is a ton of architectural variation uh, which is um, a boon to Symmetra's especially um, because uh, it gives you that much more visual distraction that makes it harder for people to pick out uh, where your sentries are, um, as well as just uh, giving sort of more of an element of surprise. Um, that's another actual like really important thing that we should talk about later as well uh, when we're talking about countering Symmetra. Um, This was such a fun game. So um, I'll talk a little bit about the architecture for this clip because that's kind of predominantly um, what's working in our favor right now, aside from having you know a pretty balanced team. Uh, people are all pretty aware and cognizant covering the areas they need to be covering. Uh, so that little like semi-rotunda or like uh, a cul-de-sac <laughs> over there uh, where the fountain is, the curved wall, um, lends itself really well to um, my philosophy on turret placement, which is that um, yes, you can deal an insanely magnified amount, magnified amount of damage if you place all your sentries together in fairly uh, close proximity, but um, common sense would tell you that uh, any weapon that has a high rate of fire um, or uh, any class that has temporal temp tem temporary invulnerability um, are going to be able to take that out in a second. And by that I mean, um, let's see, uh, Mercy's Caduceus Blaster, uh, 76. Um, generally, like hit scans, um, also explosive projectiles are great. Um, but not so great if you're looking at a wall that's really close to you. You don't really want to be bouncing grenades off of that back into your own face. Um, but it'll do in a pinch. Uh, Farrah can long distance snipe because she has pretty high precision rockets. Um, and so she's a great counter if she's out of range. Um, but yeah, so um, that little piece of architecture over there is actually doing what I normally try to do anyway, which is uh, to set up a network of turrets um, that is impossible to clear out um, within one field of view, if that makes sense. Uh, any setup that requires the enemy to turn all the way around, um, as well as a uh, differences in verticality, like variation um, on that axis, uh, that will do a lot to um, dilute your enemy's um, ability to take him down in quick succession, especially if um, you get into the habit of continuously moving your mini sentries around, even if they're not destroyed. Um, and that's like a really important thing that I will actually stress because um, I feel that strongly about it. Uh, which is that just because you have a sentry comfortably <laughs> sitting, you know, close up to their spawn doesn't mean that it's a good placement. It might be in a spot where, uh, due to some, you know, unexpected blind spot, people are just walking past it. So that essentially is just, it doesn't even count, right? Um, you've now reduced your sum total from six to five uh, many sentries. Um, so uh, the way that it works is that the first one you place down will be the first to be recycled, uh, which is why I suggest always um, running all the way to the closest point you're going to put stuff down and work your way back, uh, which makes sense in, for a lot of reasons, right? Um, you want to get a little distance between yourself and uh, the enemy spawn the closer um, the countdown goes. So the first ones you're going to put down are the ones that are... Um, the nearest and will probably be destroyed uh, the fastest. Um, so the seventh sentry that you place is going to remove the oldest or the uh, first placed sentry. Um, and you'll see me doing this almost constantly, hyperactively, which is that I'm not content to um, leave any sentry where they are for more than 
two or three minutes. Uh, even if it's intact, I'm just going to keep recycling them. And that's really important for uh, maintaining um, that degree of surprise, which keeps, uh, which makes the other team just, you know, a, a little bit anxious. Um, because an area they think they've cleared, it's back. Um, the place where you thought it was going to be, it's not. Uh, there's lasers shooting at you, but you can't see because it's concealed in these really unexpected spots at like, you know, like angle level, stuff like that. Um, you want to kind of shake them up as much as possible. Um, and that's what I mean when I say to friends that Symmetra is actually, um, her tech is kind of uh, the complete opposite of um, her personality as it's portrayed in the game and, you know, related literature. Uh, she's shown as kind of like almost pathologically obsessive compulsive, um, always in search of order. Um, but the effects that her abilities have on others, on the enemy, which is great, is that she uh, works to instill this kind of um, ADD type disorientation, if that makes sense, right? Um, these turrets are an extension of yourself. It really helps to think about it that way. Um, these turrets are an extension of yourself and um, it makes up for being incredibly low HP. It makes up for being, um, you know, just otherwise kind of unimpressive aside from the uh, deploy rate, um, stuff like that. Uh, they're not powerhouses, right? And it's that's as it should be, I believe. Um, but uh, if you consider it as having six little helpers around you to um, pull attention or focus away from yourself when you're one v oneing an enemy that you've run into, um, it really helps to think of it that way. Um, same as like a think of thinking of. Um, them as extensions of your uh, arsenal, your weapon arsenal uh, that you hold, your handheld guns. Um, it's now that they, they're attacking from three angles instead of one. And the great, the greatest part is that even when the operator, you, um, is dead, uh, those things will continue to attack until they're taken out. And uh, just in the past two days, I've seen probably maybe half a dozen, maybe a little more. Um, Alts that don't involve invuln, um, that don't make uh, the user invulnerable, um, are like really easily taken care of by just a couple of measly turrets. Um, I'm gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> just a couple of measly turrets um, because it's their inattention, right? They decide. I'm the biggest threat for some reason, even though um, I honestly think you should take the turrets out first, always. Uh, their inattention, um, just just a few seconds and it'll just drain the life right out of you. Um, so yeah, it's great to think of it like that and think of them as disposable. Don't be precious with them, you know? Um, when you redeploy a new one, just think of it as uh, moving them as opposed to throwing them away and starting over. Um, that's how quick they go down. It um, doesn't cost you anything. Uh, it's great. Um, I'll watch for a second and see if I can find an example of sort of this idea of um, territory, right? We're establishing territory. Uh, if it's a payload, it's kind of a moving front line, right? They're pushing up um, and we're attempting to set up roadblocks. Uh, and a lot of people think of this as sort of kind of a clean line, right? So it's like right where that truck is stopped or whatever. Um, that line right in front of there uh, is still our territory, but they've pretty much claimed everything behind it. That's a really defeatist way to play this game. Uh, that's not to say that Symmetra, who is a weakling, um, some say she's the, ver the very squishiest person in the entire game. She's a little more hardy than that, but yeah, like you, you're not really the one who should be running out head first. Um, before anyone else, uh, you're good at medium long range. Like, not all the way back like a sniper, because you're not really going to do much. Um, but right at that point where you can kind of uh, bob in and out of the action and maintain a safe distance so that you can tend to your other duties, like applying uh, those 25 HP hard light shields, um, carrying, you know, protecting your teleporter, uh, moving around your sentries, things like that. Um, but close enough that if someone um, sort of uh, 
breaches that line that you guys have put down, um, you can move forward just a few feet and blast them a little bit with your primary weapon, which is insanely powerful if you if you don't know, and we'll talk about that in a few seconds as well. Um, but you'll see uh, if you look at my videos that uh, I tend to set up a little further up than anyone else that I've played with. Um, and that might just be a habit left over from playing Team Fortress 2 forever and ever and ever, uh, where people will start up on defense really, really close to the spawn, like pretty much face to face, um, hiding in the corners. Uh, sentry is usually a little further back because they are kind of precious commodities, like the standard, you know, like the level three uh, sentry that takes a few minutes to um, get up and running. Uh, but even with those, I find that people are a little more aggressive in TF2 um, in kind of uh, pushing up as close to their spawn as possible, right? And I'm more of this mind than run back and hold down first because they've managed to get out. Um, I think as many roadblocks as you can throw in their way to slow them down, that's money. That's money in the bank. That's money that's helping you, right? Um, and you guys have been in overtime where it comes down to a matter of seconds. Um, <coughs> and can lead to the most unexpected uh, wins and losses. So so here I am, I'm pushing, uh, is this the beginning of the round? Yeah, okay. So I'm sort of establishing a very zigzaggy um, boundary for me, uh, which I, I don't even think of it that way, but if we're thinking about sort of like the front line and what that is, um, it's not a straight line, right? Uh, I'm getting into the niftiest corners possible where um, it has a good chance of remaining undetected and inflicting maximum damage before it's destroyed. Um, so traditionally you'd expect that if my first four turrets or whatever are taken down, I'm dead again, um, that I would now retreat, you know, a hundred steps, whatever, retreat to the next choke and, you know, really work on setting up there. But um, I don't feel like that's necessary. Uh, the closest analogy I can find is that these are like uh, even more low-key disposable mini sentries like from TF2. Um, they take virtually no time to get up and running. Um, you can literally just set them down and run, uh, which means that you can get a lot closer to the action, even like get in there, you know? Um, again, staying as safe as possible, but um, you can get in because it requires almost no setup time whatsoever. So you can get in and get out. If you feel like you can do that safely, it's a really great way of of playing it. Um, <laughs> so already a few of mine had been destroyed and instead of you know retreating way far back I find an opening where the other team is spawning and there's not too much risk to me. I move up as close as I possibly can and get some sentries down on their cart. Um, you can also see that uh, when we're following this like linear progression the path that uh, the payload's going to take um, in terms of that, I stagger the distance, right? I don't, I don't even ever put down really three at a time, um, unless it's to guard uh, a teleporter. And this game is funny because I accidentally put the teleporter behind enemy lines, uh, and I feel like there's a lot of potential for uh, that, but um, <laughs> maybe not this box. It's a little precarious. Um, yeah, but I managed to get behind the enemy, and if I were a stronger character, like. That could have really screwed him up. Um, it's also a spot where people I'm fighting, like right here, this is the second one, I think. Yeah, um, this is the second girl to jump off uh, that cliff while trying to get away from my piddly little laser gun. Um, the first one was uh, that tracer that came at me and just like panic suicided off the cliff. Um, so yeah, I guess don't be precious about your sentries, uh, know your limits, but also know your strengths. Um, Symmetra's primary fire is incredible, it just requires a ramp up speed. And that means that if you are not um, keeping track of uh, reloads, uh, reloads, um, how full your clip is, um, and there you go, you see D.Va wiped out uh, some poorly placed turrets and that allows them to do a real fast hard push. Um, I don't remember what I was saying, um, but anyway, oh jeez, I'm gonna die here too. Oh, well, 
So yeah, like uh, my job, my job personally, not all symmetries, but the way I play it, um, I try and think of like the sort of like the line, the front line is a more sort of a, a movable thing, a fluid thing. And any opportunity you can see to, um, I think I die again. Yeah, those Reinhardts are after me. Uh, any opportunity you see to get back in and bite even just a little chunk back out of territory that they've claimed or captured, um, that's how I like to play it. I'm really not a fan of the uh, sort of more formal, um, well, let's all bail and go to point B. There's, there's no use now. I'm going to die. Yep. This game was, was, was tough. So as symmetry, you're actually going to be a lot more active than you think. It's, uh, and you need to be able to switch modes, like mental modes, um, what you're doing, switch from defense to offense to support uh, constantly. And you need to be monitoring several things, such as uh, who's taken your teleporter and how many people. Um, you need to monitor the safety of the environment in which you put down your teleporter. Um, one of your big duties is to apply that uh, 25 HP hard light uh, blue shield, um, which I can't remember if it's blue or yellow that's um, the best kind of HP to have. Um, but with Symmetra, she naturally has the white and the blue, so if you can get some armor from, from Torb, you have the yellow armor as well. Um, and my blue armor, um, my blue shield, will actually regenerate after three seconds of um, not taking any damage, meaning that that 25 HP is uh, with you until uh, you die <laughs> and take a final blow that's uh, worse than 25 HP. And I, these videos almost make me feel bad because, um, you know, obviously these are not coordinated top tier teams. Um, a lot of the times I see Reinhardts pushing by themselves um, and Reinhardts are actually pretty susceptible to uh, Symmetra's um, technologies. Uh, so yeah, this is not like super high level play or anything like that. Um, so you're bound to kind of see a lot of players just keep running in thinking maybe if I just run faster, maybe if I wraith form past, uh, maybe if I blink in and out, maybe if I Genji ult, and none of these things ever work because I don't set up a single choke point. I set up a network of, um, constantly moving mini turrets. Um, so when you think you're in the clear and you've used up that uh, cooldown opportunity to dash past something, um, and you think you're in the clear, you're not. There's probably about four other turrets uh, between you and where you want to go. Um, or if you're looking for a refuge, or if you're looking for a health pack, or a side route, there's probably turrets there too. Um, so. Uh, on Numbani as well, there's one really gung-ho Genji that just, I mean, he keeps coming. And he keeps saving up that ult. He just keeps saving it up thinking, this is how I get past it. You can hear him deflecting and then dashing. Um, and uh, he dies every time, like solely due to the mini turrets. So uh, it's like funny and kind of sad and also nothing to get cocky over. I had. Uh, I made this video, um, like the footage for it, uh, when I had uh, just brought my win rate up from like 50 to 70, 70 as of today out of 30 games, um, and also had um, had three complete shutouts playing defense as Symmetra, uh, which went to my head a little bit maybe. Um, So yeah, that's just that was what was going on when I when I made this video. Um, this is just a uh, you know first thoughts. Anyway, I'll probably release an actual tutorial at some point. Um, there are a few things in this world that I uh, feel confident about, especially this early on in the learning process. But uh, I just kind of get Symmetra. Like I get her. I get it. Um, and that's one thing that's actually helped um, from playing TF2. The things that haven't helped are my habits that I've picked up playing 
Medic, uh, for when I'm playing Mercy, Scout, for when I'm playing Tracer, and uh, NG when I'm playing Torbjorn. Um, and this is actually closest to um, Gunslinger NG that I, I love to play. Um, sort of a more, not offensive, uh, but a little more up in the front lines, um, but another kind of like know your limits kind of guy, you know? Uh, so yeah, let's just watch for a few minutes and smoking a cigarette, take a break. Map knowledge, very important, obviously. Uh, know your flanks. Uh, but even if you don't know the maps inside out yet, and I don't even really either, um, locking down a few is better than locking down none. Um, process of elimination. Uh, <laughs> poor Jacques. You should always be aware of who needs a shield who you haven't gotten to yet. Please make sure everyone has one. It's not your top priority, but it is an important priority. And for low health pool um, classes, it, it can be the difference between life and death. Um, body shots uh, have been nerfed, so not so much of a concern, but um, yeah, for, s for some classes, maybe hardier classes, it could help you survive it you know, full on headshot, stuff like that. So let's look at this rollout here. Um, I don't have a lot of shoulds or musts, but uh, there's one thing that I say that you absolutely must do. It is to start moving your ass the second you're able to. The second the hero selection screen closes after counting down, uh, you're going to hightail it out of there, you're not going to stop for anything. Your main priority, even more so than Torbjorn, who only needs to pick one spot, uh, is to get on site and do as much as possible. And then after that you can retreat or you can spam a few uh, orbs at your, uh, at your opponents uh, before kind of maybe moving back just a little bit. Um, it might be tempting when uh, other higher mobility classes are behind you in spawn um, and you want to get the shielding out of the way uh, as fast as possible, uh, don't, that's not your primary concern. It's important, but it's not your primary concern. Um, and that's just going to have you slowing down, turning around, uh, scrambling to keep track of who's where. Uh, just scan all of your teammates and as soon as you get a teleporter up, tracking your teammates and whether or not they have shields will become infinitely easier uh, because all you have to do is um, see anyone who is coming from the direction of your teleporter room and uh, they will have just respawned so you can just apply the armor as they uh, come out. Um, like this Genji, he breaks my heart because he gets resurrected again as well so he dashes across to the other room which is also like a pit of death and he dies twice and I know they're not real but I just, I feel feel bad. So yeah, that's the ideal rollout is uh, move as fast as possible, don't stop for anyone. If you can get a Lucio to speed boost you up to the front line, um, that is the best. Uh, expect not to have enough time to place all six, but aim for four good ones and fifth and sixth will probably be a little hurried. <laughs> So yeah, we get pushed back all the way to warehouse. Um, I don't know if that's the actual call out, but it's the midway point between, I think it's four payload capture points, which is a really kind of interesting, great space to play with. Um, so it has all these obstacles um, for cover and ducking and setting up little traps. And uh, I briefly talked about baiting. Um, it's, it's about body language and it's also about learning to retreat and seeing if that retreat is you know, learn, knowing when to retreat is important anyway for your uh, survival. Um, but it also does this thing where people perceive you as weak because you are. You're squishy, like I said. Um, and, so, and sometimes even the best players, they have sort of a, this like human desire to uh, chase the thing that 
that's been nagging at them, right? Like really just like, let's end that little weak thing that's been needling at me um, all around. Uh, so just back up until he hits one of those little mini chokes you've set up, uh, drain his HP, jump around him like crazy, and melt him. He's done for in under three seconds. He's done. But there's a lot of other ways to play Symmetra, but I think this is uh, the things that I've kind of scattered throughout this video, um, which I'll probably work on structuring it later if I ever get around to it, um, are really suited for solo queuing. And by that, if you're not familiar with that, it means um, in quick play uh, or even in uh, ranked matchmaking to instead of going in with a pre-made group of people you know, uh, just queuing alone and getting placed wherever, which is considered a crapshoot. Some people hate it, say it's toxic. Um, but like it's just like it's my weird guilty pleasure because I really love meeting weird new people. I'm not irritated, you know, by uh, high pitch voices and kids. Uh, as long as people like seem to have like a good head on their shoulders, I don't even mind a little trash talk. Like, and uh, I'm thankful to say that like I've met literally probably fifty, maybe a hundred uh, great people to play with through Steam. You know, playing CS:GO, TF2. Uh, and now Overwatch, I've made, I think, like, you know, 15 puppy friends, and it's good, because you can just group up for experience. Um, but other than that, you know, you don't need to be focusing on um, self-imposed rule sets or moves, tactics, anything like that. Um, that's the way I like to play it, so this is more geared towards that. Um, with a more coordinated group, I would say that a Symmetra can be really great at holding down one specific geographical point as opposed to scattering her turrets for recon purposes like I do. Um, for instance, uh, if there's a, fuck you McCree, if there's like, you know, one hallway that um, is a notorious flank route that and people keep seeming to get behind us, um, I might set up and monitor just that area and continuously deliver comms to the rest of my team who may be elsewhere, and I'll be mostly self-sufficient. I already kind of am, but um, I'll be a little more isolated, and, uh, sorry, <laughs> I was transfixed by the teleporter, it's so beautiful, um, so yeah, I'd probably, uh, tighten down my, like, geographical, um, stuff, uh, what a vague word, I'm getting a little tired, um, if I was working with like a six man, um, which has its own merits, it's just not my style. So uh, this is just how I play and that's why I call it the Scrubs Guide. Um, I don't know if we really got to cover everything, but uh, if anything at all, there is, there are, I don't know, like seven or so uh, full length matches that you've been watching, um, fast forwarded a little bit. Uh, if you wanna actually watch the details um, in slow-mo, I'm gonna put up a slowed down version as well. Uh, and this is ongoing, so there probably will be a version 2 coming out soon when I manage to, uh, you know, get on uh, Hanamura and a couple of other maps. Um, I actually, and, and then I'm going to be mo moving on to uh, Asymmetrical Attack, uh, which is going to be interesting and not my, what is, <laughs> sorry, uh, and not my um, strong suit. Uh, and today I started playing um, symmetrical maps, uh, basically, um, I know you'd call them like a king of the hill or something like that, best two out of three structured games. Um, and it was iffy, but we landed a couple of victories. I did get my first person bitching at me um, about playing a terrible class or whatever, and I just told him to stop whining and being a baby. I mean, he definitely has a point, but if I can't try out new things um, in a pub from time to time, especially when I've been uh, doing my job and doing a good job doing my job. Um, I think I deserve a break and to mess around a little, so uh, footage for Elios will be coming in the next couple of days. Uh, I think there's a little more to talk about in terms of um, assessing your team composition. Like, uh, these are all games from the past two days, but at no point did I decide I'm going to play Symmetra no matter what. Um, there were times when I really wanted to, and the team composition just didn't work. 
Uh, but defense is a lot more forgiving in terms of not having a healer and instead having one or two classes like me and Torb who can drop um, different kinds of uh, armor or shielding. Um, or, if, or if we have a tank that's kind of dedicated to, uh, you know, um, reducing the amount of fire that comes towards us. Uh, don't know if I finished that sentence, but I think you guys probably get the idea. Um, and yeah, I guess the final thing that I may or may not have already said is that Symmetra is at heart. She's a support, she may feel diluted, all that stuff, but when it comes to her offensive or area denial capabilities, she's honestly just a gigantic troll, uh, <laughs> and she's a harasser. Um, and that's a word that gets thrown around a lot, and sometimes incorrectly. And I would say that in this game, um, the most clear-cut clear -cut harassers are Symmetra, who is like the off harasser, right? She's not like the prototypical harasser. Um, and then we have the tank harasser, Diva. Her insane mobility and maneuverability um, makes her really, really good at uh, surprise bopping like an enemy widow off her perch and then, you know, just run. Um, She's got a bit of like the team protection stuff with her um, defense matrix, but it's it comes far and few between. It doesn't recharge very quickly. Uh, it's excellent when it works, but it doesn't recharge very quickly. Um, she's kind of a zip in and zip out, um, you know, nab a couple of eliminations, but uh, be very cognizant of the, the strength of whatever remaining armor you have left and know when to retreat. Uh, and Tracer, obviously, um, is like the quintessential Overwatch flanker, uh, flanker and harasser. And uh, Symmetra is different from those two in that she's not flanking or, ha or harassing using her own body. She's merely setting up static little annoyances all over the map and constantly rotating through them and constantly working to surprise the enemy team. Um, and I can't like really stress enough how important it is to use the element of surprise um, to your benefit. Uh, once the other team knows where your setup is, uh, that's when it's time to move, or even before. Also because I start to feel a little bit useless when I'm not doing anything because all my turrets are alive. So you know what I do? I try and find a little you know, chink in their armor, get in, put some stuff down, move things around, taken by surprise all over again. So this will just be the last clip we take a look at. It's kind of a bonus. Um, I'd gone out in search of um, some footage for Nimbani. Uh, let's see, last night? and um, was experiencing like just disgusting issues with latency and lag. Uh, all of the like stuttering you see here is um, not from my terrible video recording technology, but um, that's how the actual gameplay looked. Uh, there's about two or three times where I get completely frozen, um, and the game was just like so low level that no one even bothered to kill me while I was standing out in the open. And uh, I like to pretend that that's a testament to the strength of my uh, defenses that I've set up. Uh, I'm sure maybe that's a little bit of it, but um, again, this is just a pub game, um, very uneven. Uh, this one kind of just started off feeling like a shutout anyway. Um, and like, I rarely want to verbalize this, though I think it a lot, but uh, the phrase that was going through my mind was like, easy peasy. Um, but yeah, <coughs> you can uh, just kind of see a bunch of stuff that I was talking about before. Um, this is the video where like Genjis and Reapers keep running in, uh, maybe overestimating their powers or something like that, and just getting wrecked even when they're alting. Um, they don't they don't last like more than ten minutes or whatever. Uh, so it kind of underwhelming actually, but it was sort of like my final proof to myself that I could. Uh, confidently go in looking for a victory to record and get it um, and I did so that was good uh, but like I said um, maybe earlier or something like that um, 
Actually, I might have cut that piece and moved it to the end, so, you know, just deal with the disorientation. Uh, but anyway, I was talking about how, <coughs> how I forget what I'm talking about a lot. So that was a great sentence that I just said with my mouth words. Um, it's late. Uh, and I put an inordinate amount of energy and <laughs> mental focus into creating this really silly uh, video. Um, but it's because I care. I care about uh, new players because I am one. Um, I care about people helping each other and sharing information without judgment and people building off of that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that is me just straight up frozen like that in the game world. Um, I, just, I can't wait till the trolling begins in this game. Like, you know, like in TF2, if someone's like lagging in spawn, you'll just whack them out the door and like off a ledge, you know? Um, the Symmetra teleporter hijinks have begun, and I don't know how to feel about that. I love a good TF2 joke telly, but like Symmetra teleporters are just so precious and gorgeous. So um, we'll see where the player base takes that. And uh, knowing my immature style and preferences i'll probably get a huge fucking kick out of it but um yeah this is all i have for you today um numbani clip will soon conclude it's you know whatever So uh, there you have it, that's the last few days um, of my Symmetra victories. I actually lost one today and it just it really hurt my pride, but we'll roll with it. Um, I'll probably move on to, I'll try and get some footage for Hanamura and maybe update this video in the future. Um, I'm definitely going to work on Symmetra on offense or work on Symmetra on uh, symmetrical maps. Um, uh, before I actually put together a tutorial, and it may end up being something that I'm not actually good at, um, and that's fine by me. Uh, but yeah, um, I think expect that in the future, and expect some changes to this. Um, but yeah, I hope I helped. Um, I'm not exactly the most uh, gathered person when I speak, um, so I'm gonna put maybe kind of like a bullet list under this video. Uh, but yeah, either way, I hope this helps you out in some way. Um, you should know that while I have a great win rate, win rate and uh, above average rankings, um, according to some of the boards, uh, I'm a new player. This whole game is new, and uh, I've been playing Symmetra in earnest. Um, I've been playing her on and off since the beginning, but I've been playing her in earnest for the last maybe week, week and a half. So uh, this is a tutorial for beginners from a beginner. Um, only because I think that it's something that I picked up on really quickly and have had some really surprising wins with so maybe it can help you out as well and uh on the flip side i would love some tips on uh, how to adjust my thinking my movement oh i didn't talk about movement well anyway um any kind of feedback is appreciated i hope it helped and uh most of all have fun you know when you're having those days where you're just like i really want to play some metro but they need a healer once in a while it's okay to just go you don't have to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, this has been a top tier MLG dad production. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, check out, I don't even know what to call it, just a bunch of random um, content <laughs> on doe.tf. Uh, and I'll catch you guys next time, okay? Bye.